Welcome to SufiVoice.com. My name is A. Jahangir and in today's session we'll be discussing about functioning of the brain and how mind forms memories, the five senses, gateways of knowledge and submodalities. So let's get first started with the functioning of mind. How does the mind function? <clears throat> In order to lead a successful life, we need to have knowledge. And how can one gather knowledge? It, it is through the five gateways that the person gathers the knowledge. Okay, it is our five senses which help us to understand and perceive the things around us. We come to know about the outside world with these five senses. And what are the, what are the five senses? Vision, Hearing, touch, smell, and taste. We perceive the outside world with the help of this five senses. Okay. Now, if someone sees a favorite fruit before his eyes, it is his favorite fruit and the moment the eyes fall on the fruit, the eyes send this image to the brain and the brain cells work on it and decide, the mind decides it that it is your favorite fruit. It is the fruit which you like most. Then further, mind issues an instruction to the hand. Take the fruit in your hand. And the moment the fruit is taken in the hand, the person feels the texture. Whether the texture of the fruit, the covering of the fruit is soft or hard. Then we have, we can, uh, the person feels the weight of the food, fruit. After that, once the person puts this fruit in his mouth, the test buds present on the tongue help the person create a delicious taste. Taste buds create a delicious taste which is further acknowledged by the mind that this is the same taste which he had in the past. So like this with the help of the five senses we acquire knowledge and the mind helps us to form the wisdom how to use the acquired knowledge. Okay, now if you take up a, a situation of a student, a student acquires the knowledge. Practically, how does he acquire the knowledge from the books? So what do what does he do from a book? He reads a lesson from a book. How? through his eyes and what's the other way sometimes he listens he listens to his teacher so which sense is he using is he using his ears audible auditory sense okay and in some cases kinetic kinetic way of learning they practically do the thing and learn Means again, they depend upon the kinetic energy. 
kinetic movement kinetic means movement okay movement of hands and legs they do the things and practically understand it. so in order to acquire the language in order to be successful so we need to have all the five five senses working properly then only it may lead to a better way of doing the things so senses are important let's move on once the information is given by the senses and the mind decides what action to do take or what action uh, not to take okay but is it so simple no a human being is a bundle of emotions i hope everyone agrees we are all bundle of emotions we have happiness we have anger we have jealous we have hatred all this makes a human being right now what happens when someone is not happy or one when, when someone is very aggressive so in that aggressive state whatever the language he uses or the action he takes up may make the person repent in the future he may feel really sorry that why did he act so in that situation it often happens people tell this now i don't know what happened to me i lost my senses i should have not done that but i don't know why i did i'm really sorry sorry for this often we hear people saying this and it is quite natural to uh, people talk about such situations now the point here is why did the person act in such a way at that point okay when he was in an aggressive uh, aggressive state why did he take the extreme steps extreme steps may be abusing the other person or beating up the other person what happens in that aggressive state knowing that is very important now reason why when someone is in an aggressive state he loses control on his senses why does he lose control on his senses the reason is in every one of us there is a hormone called fly or fight there is a hormone called called fly or fight so fly means escape okay escaping from the situation okay moving away from the situation fight means gathering all the courage okay standing up to face the situation boldly and to come up with a good result okay so everyone has this whenever there is a threatful situation every human being will have two possibilities either to avoid and leave the place or to boldly face the place for boldly face uh, the event or the threat and be successful on it if not successful at least we'll learn a lesson from it it's very common every one of us will have such a situation okay now what happens in this fly or fight hormone when this fly or flight hormone is released some may prefer to fight some may prefer to escape that's a thing one thing the other thing is what exactly happens in our mind is for time being our conscious mind control is taken by a small organ in our mind in our brain called amygdala it's a small shape almond shape almond shape a small organ inside our brain this takes back the total control of our body and it's a threatful situation it immediately 
issues or immediately sends instructions to the body parts to act at that point of time without thinking about the future consequences whether the drastic step which the person has taken at that point where will this instruction or where will that uh, ultimate extreme steps that were taken in an ex aggressive state will land the person in the future he will not bother about it he will just take up the extreme steps as a result of which once the person gains consciousness once the person gains consciousness then he will repent because now he starts realizing in that spur of moment in that uh, where he has lost his consciousness he has committed a big trouble he has committed a big offense for which he has to pay a heavy price in the coming years so whenever someone is excited then we have to understand that our conscious mind is not working it is the job of amygdala and if we react in that situation we have to pay a heavy price in the future so what we should do we should keep keep calm stay stable control your senses don't react okay if you cannot do anything just focus on your breath just you don't do anything just see how your breathing is going on how you are inhaling and exhaling forget about all the other things maybe two or three minutes if you do the small exercise what happens the control is back from amygdala to your conscious mind now the moment conscious mind gets the control it has the capacity to take up the decisions it has the capacity to weigh the situation to decide what is right and what is wrong so whatever the decision the conscious mind takes will never land you in trouble okay now whenever someone has like you did not like someone saying something often because human being is a bundle of emotions it's not possible that whatever we say people have to always agree with us okay so what is good to for us may not be good for others and what is good for others may not be good for us so we should not act violently we should not keep high expectations that uh, we should always keep an upper hand so when consequences are not in your favor when consequences are not in your favor then you try to fight the situation then you will bring a new trouble and a disturbance inside you which is not good for you okay so you have to keep a calm head say stay stable wait for some time okay then with a calm mind with a peaceful mind whatever decision you take all those decisions will be in your favor and you can stand once again victorious over your enemy okay so the take away here is in an excited state in an exist uh, ex, uh, like aggressive state or when you are very much emotionally discharged keep an eye on your thought process keep an eye on your actions don't act or react violently when you are under control of amygdala wait for the amygdala to transfer the control back to the conscious mind okay so if you can control this if you can have peace within you for that two or three minutes then you will be safe and you will be confident you will be happy in almost all the situations 
After all, life is all about living a happy life. Okay, so that was a little bit about the functioning of mind. Okay, now what exactly happens or how does we store the things around us? Now, whenever there is some message given by the five senses to the brain, the brain processes it and makes a memory out of it. And we live life with the help of those memories. Okay, now someone likes a fruit very much. Now, uh, how will he make it his memory? He will have some words to describe the qualities of the fruit which he likes very much. And the memory is stored with those qualities. Isn't it? So, the brain cannot, like, though brain has capacity, mind has capacity to create the visions, but most of the information is stored in terms of the five senses. That's how we recollect and that's how we process the information and that's how we take decisions. Okay, now let us move on further with submodalities. Submodalities is a very powerful feature of neurolinguistic programming techniques. It is one of the very powerful features. Now, before getting in how it is useful, let us first look what is this submodality. Submodality uh, is the feelings or features of how we feel the things that we see. The feelings or the features which with the help of which we make memories and store them in our mind or the submodalities. Okay, let us take an example. So when we talk about memories, they can be a cherishable, okay, blessed memory, good memory, and they can be painful or a bad memory. Right, now let us take a, uh, an example where a person has a good memory and a bad memory to understand basically what this submodalities are. Okay, now if I ask a person to recollect, recollect an incident when he met his best friend and describe the submodalities, how he feels in terms of words to me. So the person may say, when I ask him to recollect uh, about his favorite friend, is he able to form a picture? So the person may say, yes, I am able to form a picture. Then I may, uh, if I further ask, is what color is the picture? So he may say the picture is in bright colors, radiant, glittering colors. Why? Because he likes his friend. And if I have asked him, how do you feel when you see the picture? He may say, I am very happy to look at the picture. Then if I ask him, can you locate where the picture is in your mind? Is it above your eyes? Is it in line with your eyes or is it below your uh, somewhere down below here so he may say it is placed just above his eyes and the color of the picture is very bright brilliant okay now if i ask him do you hear any sounds so he may say yes i hear the voice of my friend and the voice is very clear it's crystal clear. So if I further ask him, if I'm going to the, mow the picture, if you're going to mow the picture a little bit before your eyes, 
how do you feel he says that happiness the intensity of his happiness is increasing the intensity of happiness is increasing okay so what did i do in this case i had just an example of sub modalities of a good memory of a friend okay now to the same person now let us ask him to describe the sub modalities about a bad memory let us ask him or if he is asked to describe about his enemy or the person he doesn't like the person he hates much now if you ask him so can you pictureize can you visualize your enemy and where do you see the picture of your enemy now this time he will not tell you that the picture is above his eyes but he will say the picture is placed somewhere down now if i ask him is it a color picture or is it in black and white in most of the cases mostly people will say that it is a black and white color and if i further ask him do you hear any voices so sometimes they may tell most of the cases they may say that they don't hear any voices and if they say yes they will recollect that bitter words or uh, the trouble filled words and hear the person will not be comfortable he will try to avoid hearing to those sounds and definitely in most of the cases they will say that the picture is very far from them they will never like to see or bring the picture close to them the more and more you move the picture far away from their vision they will be more comfortable ok now these are the sub modalities some modalities are the recollection of the feelings about uh, a thing or about an event okay and in nlp it's a very good powerful technique using nlp we can bring in a changes in a very short duration perhaps in one sitting also so there are many cases like especially most of the people have phobias phobia is a fear of a thing like hydrophobia hydro means water fear of water okay agrophobia okay so hydrophobia is fear of water this person will become disturbed whenever he steps inside the water because he has fear of water now once we work on with the sub modalities of hydrophobia or the person who has hydrophobia then it becomes very easy to bring in change and after that after one nlp session this person will never have any sort of phobia in his hydro at least he will not have hydrophobia anymore okay so sub modalities or a very important aspect of neuro linguistic programming language right so that was a little bit about today's session hope you all enjoyed uh, like enjoyed and liked today's session uh, please do like and spread the good work with your friends and relatives take care thank you